Thanks, Don. First of all, I want to congratulate the fellow and all the inductees that are celebrating this evening. And uh, they say five minutes. Well, how can you reminisce 81 years of your life in five minutes? It's going to be very difficult. But first of all, growing up, there were things that we were taught. And I'm, I'm not sure that people are taught the same things. But first of all, it's God. So we grew up with the belief in the Almighty. And coming to Delaware, the first thing that I run into is Father James Vincent O'Neill and Father John Birkenheuer at Salesiano. They were coaching football and basketball. So that was the first introduction and we became excellent friends, just great friends throughout all of their careers. The next at the University of Delaware, 42 years ago, Monsignor Zuper comes in. And we've been attending the oratory for ever since we came to Delaware when they established that. So that took, excuse me, that took care of the faith and God part. The next we were taught was family. Well, the family that I had brought us up the way they were supposed to in those days, with a good education, good morals, and everything else. And family started 61 years ago when I met Martha when I was in service. Well, you got to say, you got God, family, and then country. Well, the country part of it was fine because 37 years in the Air Corps, I ended up in Salina, Kansas, where I met my wife Martha. So we've had this love affair now going for 61 years. I don't know if anybody else can. And when you start talking about family, people say, well, uh, you're coaching three sports and you're teaching and you're on the road and everything. And then came Anne, Mark, Mary, Patrick, Michael, John, Jane, and Claire. <laughs> and how did that go? Well, every time we came back from Michigan from our summer camp, everybody would say, is she? <laughs> and I would say, it's none of your business. <laughs> but then after family, I, I, I say not after family, but still with the family, again, then we were blessed right now with 17 grandchildren. Many of them are here. And then the son-in-laws and the daughter-in-laws. And we got another Terp here. Tom Bratton, the offensive line coach at the University of Maryland in the last five years. And uh, the Terps are struggling a little, but they'll be back. <laughs> also, besides all that, God, family, and serving your country, comes that aspect of serving your community. And in serving the community, two things. Uh, I spent 16 years during my lunch hours at the university going over to Holy Angels grade school coaching the track and field team for the CYO track championships. And one of those particular track athletes, Dr. Bill Funk, little kid, ran track. He was hoping to be an Olympian someday, never worked up to that, but he is our family doctor now, which is you can see I, it, not anything that I had to do with it, but again, all you can do as a coach, you just try to point in the right direction. And so many of them followed it. And then after that, after you take care of all of that, the family and your religion and your community service and your service to your country, then it comes upon your profession. And as a coach, a teacher, a professor, uh, you have responsibilities. And the responsibilities are to do the best job that you possibly can. Dave Nelson hired me in 1952. I'd coached at Hillsdale College after a four-year career at the University of Michigan. Dave had coached at Hillsdale before that. And uh, I think that one of the things is that when there was an opening at Delaware, he went to see Fritz Chrysler, one of my Michigan coaches, and Fritz recommended me to Dave. Dave invites me to come out. And I have to thank Dave. And with us tonight is the first lady of Delaware athletics, Shirley Nelson, Dave's wife.
he get involved. And Dave says, you're going to coach the ends and be the chief scout. That's fine. Football season ended. And the next thing you know, he says, you're gonna, now you're going to go out and recruit football players. Well, we spent about a few weeks recruiting football players because the budgets were limited. The territory was limited. I come back and he says, uh, you can coach the freshman basketball team now. We've had 11 game schedule and Dallas Green was on that freshman team. We went 11 and 0. The following, and then uh, the following year, you're still coaching football. You're coaching the freshman basketball team. After spring practice, Gene Stauber had, leaves to go out to Oregon and he had the freshman baseball team, so Dave says, you'll coach the freshman baseball team. Well, I had some outstanding players on that freshman baseball team. If some of you look at the picture that's out there of that freshman team, Jimmy Smith was one of the outstanding players. Not only was he an outstanding baseball player, but when I took him to Michigan to play against the Wolverines, he set a field house record of 27 points, which was just fantastic at that time and playing against the, the likes of Ron Kramer and, and some of the other famous Michigan players. But the third year coming back, Fred Emerson resigns, and Dave says, now you'll coach the varsity basketball team, and you'll coach the golf team in the spring, after spring practice, besides the teaching and everything. And this went on for 12 years with basketball, nine years with the golf team, until Scotty Duncan, Scotty kept Egg and Dave to take over the golf team, so that, only, that thing only lasted for nine years. And then, of course, a change was made. Dave stays as athletic director, and Tubby, who joined us in 54, was a head coach. And uh, the decision was a difficult one. Being a head basketball coach, you'd like to stay with it. But all of you know, in Delaware, the emphasis was on football. So we stayed with football. We went on to win many Lambert Cups, the Boardwalk Bowl games, and a lot of national championships. And uh, it was just my pleasure and the enjoyment to work with so many people. I got to get back to basketball because some of my basketball players are here. Uh, the first year coaching basketball, we played St. Joe. I had Dallas Green and Clyde Louth on the team, and we beat St. Joe. St. Joe had beaten Furman with Selvey. Selvey had scored 100 points that year. And St. Joe had just come back from defeating Furman. And we go to, to St. Joe and we beat them. And the thing about it was people said, well, uh, that should be a good send off. Well, what people didn't realize is they put me into a league with St. Joe, LaSalle, Rutgers, and Temple, Gettysburg and Muhlenberg, Lehigh Lafayette, Bucknell, most of those people were on full scholarship, and we had one and a half grant and aids based on need. Well, uh, we did get some success in later years because people like Jimmy Hagan, Dim Montero, and Mike Visnovsky at Conrad, they said, Nate and Pete, you go to Delaware. And Jimmy Hagan and Montero had uh, Billy uh, Haggerty and Dave Sisko. And then uh, we had a few people that were interested. We had a good chemical engineering program. So Ronnie Smith comes from Clendenin, West Virginia. And Bill Wagaman comes from downstate Milton. And we put together three outstanding years. And uh, you got to look back. We're going down to Virginia to play Virginia. And uh, I tried to recruit a fellow named Laquintino. And he ended up at Virginia. In the last seconds of the ball game, uh, he tosses up a uh, shot from the free throw line to go ahead, 88 to 87. We've got four seconds left in the ball game, and what do you do? You call timeout, you try to do something. So I says, well, this was before the uh, Doug Flutie Hail Mary pass. I said, John Barry, take the ball out at three-quarter court, and uh, Nate, you run down towards the basket. Barry throws that Hail Mary pass, Nate makes the basket. Clock goes off and we win the ball game. I think that's the last time that Delaware's beaten an ACC team. The following year, we're playing in the palestra against Temple. Harry Litwack has an outstanding team, and now we come to play the game, and uh, 
going to the game, Pete Cloud says, Coach, I can't play. He says he's, he, he not only had the flu, but he had a fever and temperature and everything. And uh, he's, he said, but Coach, I got to play. I got to play. Well, what I did, I started him, and he was in there maybe for a minute, and I took him out. We won that game. And I think that's the last time that the Delaware team has beaten Temple. My five minutes are up, I'm sure, but there's so many things that I could reminisce with. Uh, the university, people are asking me tonight, how come you stayed at the university for 37 years? Well, there's something special about the University of Delaware. And it all started with people like Dave and Shirley, Dr. Perkins, and the administration, and the fact that we had faculty status, we not only coached, but we taught. We swept the gym floor. We supervised the intramurals. We did the laundry. We did all of those things that people today do not have the privilege of doing because of the overemphasis. And the thing about, the only thing that I can say is that it's been a wonderful ride. And I've appreciated every minute being here in Delaware for the past, how many years, 54 years now. It's unbelievable. And I know that I haven't been able to cover the whole 81 years, but uh, I thank the people that nominated me. I thank all the members that voted for me to be in this Delaware State Hall of Fame. And uh, what I would like to finish expressing is that uh, I'm up here today, but I represent my family, our friends, the university community, faculty and staff, the coaches that I've worked with, Dave Nelson, Tubby, Hall of Fame coaches, and so many others. And then the other thing is we've had special friends in the media, not only Don, but Bill Pfeiffer, George Frick, who couldn't be here tonight. Uh, they became part of our family, and that's exactly what this has been. This, this has been a Delaware family in every respect. I thank you, and God bless all of you.